Okay, so uh, there will be two of us. Uh, I am a CEO and still a modeler at the Enelogic company. And I'll do the easy part, the PowerPoint. And uh, Nikolai, uh, who is the head of development, uh, will uh, show you the real product. And so his job is to make sure that by the end of today, you go home eager to upgrade, uh, buy new licenses, and tell your friends and colleagues how great the new product is. OK, uh, can anybody see the version number on this slide? I'll tell you where it is. It's, it's here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the, uh, these are the important dates. We started developing Anylogic 7 in December uh, 2011, so it's about uh, two years of work. A beta version is available now, and the link is in the blog section of our website, so please do uh, become our beta, beta testers. And the release is planned for January 31st, uh, 2014. Well, a year ago, in the previous conference, uh, we announced the release date about uh, August 2013, so that was a kind of 50% uh, uh, error. So now, <laughs> because the time is uh, shorter, so okay, within a month and a half, I'm sure uh, any Logic 7 will be released. Okay, so uh, uh, what's new in the product? Well, the first uh, great thing is we have a new product logo. Uh, and this. <laughs> And a, a, a kind of uh, contemporary and minimalistic uh, style dive done by Nikolai Rosadin, our ex-employee and our freelance graphics designer. And this logo, you have kind of the, uh, uh, the st uh, straight segment part, uh, which <coughs> stands here for discrete event modeling with events. And this wave, which uh, is for continuous time modeling. Okay, so there are some thoughts behind the, behind the logo. Uh, the next great thing is uh, that we have new splash screen graphics for all the uh, editions of AnyLogic. Uh, professional edition, which is a best-selling one. Uh, we have uh, advanced and we have uh, uh, educational edition of AnyLogic and also university research. We will keep the same, um, uh, same set of editions and the uh, uh, feature comparison list will be uh, basically the same with the only minor change that we will allow for library development and export in all uh, versions, all editions of any logic, including educational. Uh, well, that's pretty much it with the <laughs> new features <laughs> of the product. No, I'm joking, of course. So, uh, what, uh, what's going to stay the same? We strongly believe that uh, the future of uh, simulation model languages is multi-method, and we believe that you know thinking uh, single method and being equipped with a single method tool is a serious limitations for a modeler. So AnyLogic will continue to stay a multi-method modeling environment, uh, supporting agent-based system dynamics and uh, discrete event modeling. Uh, we will stay a kind of horizontal um, horizontal tool, and but we will provide, uh, continue providing specific support for some selected verticals. Uh, like you already know, there's pedestrian library, rail library, uh, and we will uh, do more support for health and general supply chain lo and logistics. We're still staying with Java, and therefore we're uh, cross-platform, uh, exportable, embeddable, and so on. Uh, Okay, with a new version, we mainly concentrated on uh, ease of use. We concentrated on reducing the number of, let's say, prerequisites for a modeler um, to use the product, and also on uh, increasing the efficiency uh, of, <coughs> uh, of modeling. So we try to uh, eliminate, uh, like, using your keyboard as much as possible while preserving ability to extend your graphical constructs and all like drop down lists, etc., with a code if you want to do so. So uh, rather than you know, going through this list, uh, I'll just uh, go highlight some of the features. Uh, one of the great thing we, things we did, we did a great, what I would call a great merge and clean up of things. 
you know that uh, in many models you do uh, use uh, like floor plans, maps, um, uh, etc. And you, in version six, you used to use uh, like polylines and rectangles to mark the important uh, locations on the map. No, not anymore. Uh, we're uh, in version seven. We're providing the uh, what I would call semantically rich uh, markup elements uh, for uh, to uh, to identify where are like paths, uh, nodes, uh, attraction points in in your models. All these elements um, uh, have uh, problem specific, let's see, properties. They connect to each other automatically. They automatically build routing tables, uh, uh, et cetera. So now instead of using the, let's say, decoration or presentation graphics uh, to define your routes and networks and areas, uh, you will be using uh, uh, advanced markup elements. And with these elements, uh, you can do things like, um, uh, in pedestrian models, uh, like this is a uh, pedestrian floor, or, uh, a floor map of uh, one of the uh, biggest shopping centers in St. Petersburg, and it's marked up for to do pedestrian modeling. Uh, this is an emergency department with like uh, uh, rooms and and paths, and this is a rail network. And in rail network, we do now allow uh, for curved segments. You automatically detect switches, etc. This sort of stuff. Uh, we have a new process modeling library. You, uh, in version six, we did have an uh, enterprise library for uh, describe and modeling. It's still, it's still there, um, so all of your models will continue working. Uh, and you can consider process modeling library as a, a kind of new um, uh, step, or new, new version of the enterprise library, which is uh, a lot, a lot more advanced. Well, first of all, we added the uh, what we call pool entity flow. So now, if let's say you have a process and something breaks down here, uh, uh, think if if the queue overflows and, or uh, your uh, processors uh, processing units overflow, things just continue to uh, build up that way, and you don't have to use your like hold objects to ensure that. Uh, the, the model will not, you know, signal overflow error, and uh, so it'll be easier, uh, basically, to model manufacturing processes in any logic. The push protocol is still available uh, as an option. Now, this is really a great improvement in uh, uh, resource management. Um, consider uh, consider this um, fragment of a uh, process flowchart. So this is the main. Uh, main flow of an entity. In, uh, in this case, this is, uh, this is these are patients that uh, flow along this line. So uh, let's say at a certain time in a, in a hospital or emergency department, uh, a patient needs uh, to be um, examined with an uh, out portable ultra ultrasound device. So at this, um, at this point, this patient sees as a nurse, a nurse before the nurse actually starts, you know, uh, comes to the patient, uh, he, needs, uh, she needs, he or she needs to do a certain number of things. For example, uh, seize a portable ultrasound unit, go to where it is, um, and bring it to the patient. So this is what we call a resource uh, uh, preparation stage. And this is a, a separate uh, branch of the flowchart. Uh, which uh, merges with the patient over here in the C's unit. Uh, symmetrically, after the, uh, the procedure is finished, uh, the nurse will uh, go and uh, put the uh, unit back while the patient will proceed uh, its, its own way. So uh, this uh, enables for uh, a lot more uh, sophisticated uh, resource management in, in models like healthcare models, for example, where it is really needed. And uh, it's, it's a well-known problem with the traditional discriminant modeling tools in, uh, in healthcare processes that they can, just cannot describe the, cannot uh, capture the complexity 
of the processes going on there. So we're, uh, we're adding this. Of course, optional. The, the former uh, scenarios are all, all possible, of course. Then we merged uh, our, all our resource units, like regular network base, into a, uh, just a resource. Yet another you know, uh, step towards uh, minimalism and um, conceptual cleanness. Uh, just a minor remark, we now have true physical connection of conveyors uh, so that uh, the, like, this box is like uh, on a part in this conveyor, part of it is another conveyor. It's like all this physics is now, is now handled uh, very uh, correctly and close to reality. Other parts of uh, discrete and model enhancements are, uh, well, alternative sets of resources. Uh, a, an entity can request, for example, uh, a room, a doctor and a nurse, or alternatively, if this set is not available, an entity can, uh, can request a room, uh, a doctor and a technician, and so on. So uh, you, you are allowed to specify alternatives when uh, an entity captures, uh, wants, to, wants to seize, uh, seize resources. And similar stuff, priorities and preemption, uh, various policies uh, related to that. Uh, shifts, breaks, maintenance, all that is now uh, a part of the um, seas and resource pool uh, properties. So we did a, really a lot of work on making the uh, resource management uh, as flexible as possible so you can model air, uh, processes of any, any kind of uh, complexity. Uh, this is a simple thing to, uh, to explain. Uh, previously, uh, you, you needed to use uh, kind of, uh, a uh, textual language, or Java, to describe the internals of entity. Not anymore. Now, your entities, be they uh, people or parts or I don't know, support requests, whatever, uh, can be described graphically. For example, this is a, a passenger at the airport, so uh, his parameters are, uh, has, it's his own editor, because he's an agent. Uh, uh, so in this editor, you can specify parameters, links, and, or even internal behavior of entities, because now naturally, uh, entities are agents, they, they can be active and uh, you can insert any, incorporate any kind of uh, activities uh, inside the, uh, the, um, the entities at no you know, cost, you don't need to do ex any extra programming or anything like that. Uh, pedestrian library is probably, in terms of verticals, it's our highest vertical now because uh, with a new markup, the uh, uh, models, the pedestrian models, uh, became very compact. For example, this is a model of uh, uh, shoppers at, at the at a shop, shopping center. Only probably 25 objects, and we also uh, increased the performance of pedestrian models. And uh, in in pedestrian model, there. Are actually zero, zero coding, it's all, all drag and drop and you can rapidly uh, put together very sophisticated pedestrian models with any logic so on. Uh, uh, rail library, as I said, we now have uh, uh, rail networks with curved segments, auto-created uh, auto switches, etc., or positions on track. And we also have a uh, full library of um, 3D models of rail cars used in the United States. Well, this part was heavily lobbied by Roger Bauger, who is uh, in, in this room today, who will present after lunch, uh, and he's a uh, rail modeling expert. So we have, I don't know, tens and tens of various 3D shapes for US rail cars. Uh, we have improved support for agent-based modeling, including agent creation wizards, including graphical uh, setup for links between agents, like this is a uh, uh, distribution company, and uh, these are, uh, this is uh, its fleet of trucks, so you can like visually define links uh, to the parent company or to the, uh, to the trucks. And for those guys who are uh, object-oriented minded, 
uh, we now provide visual uh, inheritance between agent types. So let's say this is the base type for a person with a certain state charts in there. Now, this could be a subtype for, for example, a patient or a male or a female, which uh, has this base behavior, but also adds some extra behavior. So uh, agent classes can now inherit one from another. And again, for those who know how to use and who are comfortable with using inheritance can use visual inheritance in any logic seven. Uh, a lot of great usability improvements. Uh, I wouldn't want to stop much on that because Nikolai uh, will sh <clears throat> show some of them. And uh, finally, uh, compatibility with uh, version six. Uh, all your version six models will continue to run. We keep all the original libraries of version six in AnyLogic seven. Uh, but we also do provide uh, special tools for uh, migrating where it's needed from uh, six to seven. Uh, and the next uh, phase of our presentation today is uh, live demo. So Nikolai Churkov, uh, head of development, the AnyLogic company. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Analogic 7, and uh, it has another layout. Uh, we have moved properties to write uh, this uh, graphical editor. It has a more area to draw. Uh, we have new palette view. And uh, this is a sample model of wholesale warehouse, and I'll show you how to convert uh, those old animation shapes like polylines and uh, rectangles to new markup shapes. Although this model is still runnable because uh, AnyLogic 7 sh is shipped with uh, a package of old six version libraries. So I just click on the group. So this is, this is a single rectangle uh, and this is a, sorry, uh, and this is a group of shapes uh, network. I just right click here and uh, choose convert uh, to network elements. And what we get, uh, this is, uh, I'll show, uh, I'll hide the animation shapes for convenience. This is also a new feature. This is a new markup element network. These elements are connected to each other and uh, you can move uh, them, they still remain connected. And uh, now I will show you how to convert model logic. So this is a large flowchart of enterprise, enterprise library blocks. I just simply select them and choose convert to new library. And what I get, uh, these are blocks from new process model library. They have uh, Parameters set, uh, for example, this one is a uh, move to, and uh, this parameter node, as you can uh, mention, uh, this is a new kind of editor. I think it's uh, the most uh, convenient thing from the usability point of view. This is a drop down list where you can choose one of the markup shapes. This is a node where entity will go. And also there is a button, like in Excel, where <laughs> which switches any logic to node selection tool. I can hover on any compatible markup element and uh, click on it and it gets into the full chart block. Thus you can create uh, your model without coding. Next, uh, usability related thing is a helper for entering some uh, probability distribution functions. For example, this delay time f can be edited using such a, such a wizard. Here we can choose distribution, observe its preview, change some parameters. The preview is dynamically updated. Here is the description and press OK. And it gets inserted into the properties of uh, delay block. So 
So I think uh, I'm uh, limited in time, so uh, I've shown you several usability features uh, of Analogic 7, and uh, I think uh, that's all. Wow. Thanks, Nicola. I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, you'll have questions. So um, what we'll do now, um, okay, we did the demo. Uh, this is the thank you slide. Uh, uh, so of course, um, I like to say thank, thank you, everybody who came in. But I have a couple of special thanks because uh, although this is the second analogic conference in a, annual analogic conference in a row, uh, in fact, the conference last year was not the first one. The real first analogic conference uh, was held in Denver exactly uh, 10 years ago. And it was organized by the two guys who I think played the major role in, in the analogic history. Analogic is a, uh, the tool designed by computer scientists like Nikolai and me, but later on shaped by modelers. And two of the modelers are now here in this room, uh, Lyle Wallace and Mark Page. They're over there. And uh, so I, I would like to, uh, uh, to thank them for patiently writing us, uh, okay, if you guys add this feature, that feature, they explain to us what system dynamics is. Later on, they explain to us what agent-based modeling is. So all these features we, uh, that you now enjoy uh, while using AnyLogic are uh, to a large extent due to these two guys. So thank you, Lyle, thank, thank you, Mark. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs>